Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the May 6th, 2012 market and trade update. Uh, interesting week last week in the markets. We had a um, poor showing on the job front, and that kind of pushed the markets down on Friday. And the futures, if you'll notice, are way down due to some uh, unfavorable outcomes for the economy in the French and European elections. Uh, we see Japan getting hammered, and they're down around, I think, 2% right now, and uh, the U.S. futures are down a percent, so it looks like Monday could be a very interesting day if things don't recover by the morning. Um, as far as the charts are going here, we have uh, the SPX right here. Again, we came, had this little bounce last week, came back down to a uh, trend line support area. Like I was saying, we're kind of in sideways chop right now. The interesting th thing that may be happening here is most of the indices are setting up this head and shoulders uh, topping pattern, which more than likely is going to break to the downside if, uh, if the uh, futures tend to hold true. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, and even if it does, we'll have to watch and see what happens uh, at this 1335 level here in the uh, in the SPX. In general, the longer term charts are still bullish until we break this level at, uh, like I said, 1335. But uh, this surely is an indication that we may be reversing. We get a harsh break and retest this trend line and head further down. Then you know we could be getting kind of ugly in the uh, in the SPX. If we take a look at the Dow. We have the same type of thing happening. I mean, you can call it a double top here or a triple top. But realistically, we have a shoulder, a head, another shoulder setting up. Looks like we're going to break this little trend line here. Again, you know, this is really, no matter how fast this goes and how harsh it is, it's considered side, sideways chop all the way down here to 12,750. And actually a little bit lower than that because we have some lows that penetrated that slightly. You know, we get a hard break under here, then then we get a market sediment shift to to uh, bearish for a little while. But as for right now, we're just kind of sideways in the Dow as we are in the SPX. The NDX, same type of thing. I'd expect to hold this sideways range. I wouldn't be surprised to see us to come down here to the uh, 2570 level. Test this uh, this low down here if we uh, if we get the breakdown, and wouldn't be too concerned about going bearish unless we get a break under that. And for the good old rut, same type of story, a head and shoulders topping pattern. Neckline's going to be here. We'll probably break under that. But we have, again, some pretty decent support in this area here. So, um, you know, we're still expecting a little bit of sideways chop. I, like I said, I wouldn't be ex surprised to come down in, even into this range a little bit before I get too excited uh, to the downside. We'll have to watch the other guys, see what they're doing. Let's see, what's the first one? To, the rut's probably going to be the first one to break down. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to watch the SPX here at, um, at about 1340. So, as for now, we are still holding, I'm still holding my, my view that we're going to say in this sideways range from um, about 1340 up here to 14 and a quarter on the SPX. And as far as the rut, I'm still saying 775 to about 850. And, um, you know, we'll have to watch for a breakdown. Things can change. Uh, like I said, with that bad report and this news, if that technically damages the charts, it could get ugly. But other than that, uh, we're still saying sideways. Okay, let's take a look at our trades. I happened to enter the June Method 3 trade on Friday. So I entered uh, 7, 10, 7, 60, 8, 10, put butterflies, two of those, added two $68 call, IWM calls, and uh, and this is what the position looks like. I did get a very good fill, and uh, I fought for it, and ended up being up at the end of the day. You know, the, the analyzed graphs showing uh, up 116 for tomorrow. This is going to change things. It's going to raise our volatility, and if we get a down, if we get a down move, this, this this may be down money tomorrow. But like I said, there's really uh, no problem. This trade will will stay with a very large down move, so no no issues there. Let's take a look at the bearish butterfly for June. 
I sent out a, a tweet and a, I put a blog post in. For you guys who aren't following uh, my blog, it's uh, you know, lockinyoursuccess.com. And if I have a small trade or a small adjustment that I do during the week and I don't really have a whole lot of time to spend a half an hour or an hour doing a video, then, uh, then I'll just send out a quick little post on that. So you might want to follow those. Uh, as for this trade here on Tuesday when the markets were up, we did tag 8.30 which is our adjustment point. I mean, I could have added it. I could have not added it. I mean, by the guidelines, I could have gone either way. It's one of those things that just barely surpassed 830. You know, some of the people trading this may not want it, have wanted it, but I actually really wanted to get into this 810. And the reason I did is, is you know, as, as I was saying last week, I think we're in a sideways range. So I'm glad we went high enough that I could buy the guidelines, actually uh, get this 810 in. And of course we had the pullback and this is up quite nicely now. And you know, if this holds up, I might be wishing I didn't buy the A10, but as for right now, uh, you know, things are looking really good. This A10 is going to come off sometime, somewhere around the, um, probably the about 765 level. Uh, we'll see how, see how the markets hold up. And also on Thursday, I sent out a message that I closed the um, May M3 trade, so we can take a look at that. Here it is here is what it would look like if, if we were still open uh, on the trade. I was up very close to a, uh, a profit target, and by that I mean I didn't hit the $1,000 that uh, I was looking for because I entered this trade in stages. I, I entered um, half of it early with a profit target of $500, and I entered the second half of it when the first position was up $250 or so. So when I entered my second half, I, I said, well, um, I will take a $750 profit target. That would be $500 on the first section and $250 on the second section. So I went ahead and I was up uh, over $750 on the on the combined trade, and I I, um, I sold out of it on Thursday with the market pullback. I thought it was a good opportunity to do so, and I came in at a profit of $793, take out commissions, and $748. So it was pretty much right on target of what I wanted to do. Had I stayed in it till Friday, I would have been better off. I could have taken some more money on Friday, but uh, I'm glad I wasn't in it over the weekend. Or, I guess it doesn't really matter. What would have happened is I would have made an adjustment on this had I still been in it. So, had I still been in this on Friday with the pullback, these butterflies would have been rolled back, and the position would have been fine, you know, even with a, uh, even with a harsh down move. But as it is, I saw an opportunity to get out near my profit target. I, we're getting closer to expiration. I just took it, and we're moving on to June. All right, that's it. So we got some futures and European markets and Japan getting beat up tonight. We got uh, market levels setting up for a head and shoulders reversal on the daily charts. We have support at the weekly charts, which pretty much equals confusion in the marketplace and probably more sideways chop in this fairly wide range that we have. Should we break down under the, the uh, support levels, then you know things can get pretty ugly. We've seen what happens at these levels. We've had a couple of times already we've been here and had some very significant down moves. So sideways to down is bias for this week. And um, happy trading, everybody. Uh, we'll keep you updated with any changes. Thank you and good night.